Right, this is it. This is the grand finale. Welcome back to Menace Rides. In this episode, we're going to finish this BMW F650. It's sitting under the covers for too long now. We're going to get all the bits and bobs back onto the bike and finally finish this bike and reveal it to you at the end of this video. But stay tuned. Enjoy the assembly and the effort that's been put into this. And again, like, share, subscribe and enjoy this video. Time to get this engine looking good. Let's just charge, let's go. Let's see what this does to our engine. I'm using some high coat engine enamel, the perfect finish. That's what I'm talking about. That's just a basic first coat of clear on our chain guard. Boom. Petrol resistant clear coat. Clear coat sorted on the chain cover guard. Look at that. Looking awesome. This is where you need patience. Sanding, cleaning, sanding, cleaning. Just so you can get a coat or two of Spark's gonna look awesome. It's gonna be one of a kind. I hope this works out. But for now, patience and sanding. A lot of sand. Put in some primer coat. Right guys, I'm pretty sure you've guessed it, as part of our bespoke paint job we're going to be doing a little bit of pinstriping which I've already done on the red. I did that off camera just so that I can make sure I'm comfortable with what I'm doing here. It's my first time pinstriping anything. I'm going to add the BMW Motorsport colours, so we're doing a black with a pearl metallic white and a break in between with the Motorsport colours. Let me just show you how I'm going about it. So basically I'm taking a... I bought three separate rolls of uh, pin striping off eBay. Um, chose the colors I could find that best suited the motorsport colors as individuals. They didn't come as a kit. I'm doing a basic measure and then cutting it to size so I've got something easier to work with. There we go. I then start peeling it, I wrap it around that edge, I pull it straight across and overlap the front edge as well as the back edge just to make sure we've got something going on there. I'm going to clear coat over the pin striping uh, so we've got a nice smooth finish uh, that looks awesome. So. Ah, 
Right guys, there you have it. A full motorsport custom detailing by Menace Rides, matte black, motorsport, pearl white, motorsport. It's gonna look awesome. Dun da da. Just needs clear coats obviously, but that's the Okay, so we're finally at the point that I've been waiting for and that's to get these fairing covers, the left and right fairing covers sorted. Uh, they're not in terrible condition. They're obviously going to get resprayed and fixed up. I'm going to put new stickers on that. But the biggest problem I have is it's got a crack. I hope you can see that there, right through. So, like I said, I'm going to try to fix everything on this bike instead of replacing. I could just buy a new one and replace it, but I know I'm doing a custom spray job on this, so I might as well do a repair and get it sprayed anyway. I'm going to be trying and testing out this uh, eBay special. It's a electronic heat staple gun. I don't know what you really call it. Uh, the instructions are in Chinese, obviously. Uh, it's got all these little different staples for different uh, applications. And the theory is that from behind, you heat it up with a gun, you press it in, twist it a little bit and hopefully that binds the plastic back together and prevents any further damage I suppose. So I'm going to try it out. I'm going to get set up and bring you guys back into the video once I've got this all figured out and set up. Okay guys, so having, looking at, look, having a look at the kit, uh, this is a 220 volt, 50 watt plastic welding gun uh, it comes with one two three four five six seven eight different packets of staples there's plenty they reckon there's 300 staples the ones I'm going to be using are these wavy shapes I hope you can see that um, it does come with a little side cutter that's nifty and handy for some reason it comes with a little sharp stainless blade I do believe that some of these are for outside corners and inside corners, these staples. Um, anyway, I've tried one just to see how it works. And like anything you do the first time, you will make a mistake most likely. And I seem to have pressed it in too deep. So you've just got to gauge your plastic thickness. Um, I'll have to sand that out and just see if the metal comes through and then just, I don't know, delete it. But I'm pretty impressed. It works pretty quick. Again, you just got to judge how deep you're going based on your material. These staples just uh, pop into the two nozzles. Just give it a slight press, that's it. Just a slight press. And I use my finger to make sure that the plastic is pretty much flush on the face side of the plastic. And it's quite cool because as you heat it up, I hope you can see that, it'll actually start glowing red, like pretty quickly. Uh, let's see, and there we go. It's got a nice little light as well. Anyway, I'm gonna heat it up, and all I'm doing is I'm heating it up, pressing it into the plastic and giving it a little bit of a quarter turn so that these don't come out. I've heard that if you just push it in straight, let it, adhere and pull it out eventually these can pop out so the idea is to push it in and twist and then release but before you release just give it a couple of seconds for the plastic to start hardening otherwise you will just pull it through the hot plastic and here we go waiting for it to get slightly warm and i can switch it off twist it a bit i can apply heat twist and i think as simple as that, it's done. Here we go. Second staple in, less than a couple of seconds. And that's what it looks like. Starting to repair our crack, which is up here. You can see that other staple showing through, but that's 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 it. Um, very easy to use, very happy with the product. Um, I might put a link in the description below, but it is just an eBay. A plastic welding gun and yeah I think it's about 30 quid and definitely handy if you're building and fixing motorbikes so I'm gonna get this panel sorted cleaned up spray painted and okay guys all done with the plastic welding I managed to get four into our little crack and the question is is it strong 
Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that. No flex at all. That little 30, 25 pound kit has saved me by new fairing. So let's get them sanded, sprayed and sorted. Here we go, my panel's all repaired. I uh, also took the time and effort to put a little bit of filler behind our steel staples. I've done a coat of primer, I've then sanded the primer with a bit of a 600 to smooth it out. I haven't put primer yet because I've got something special that's gonna happen to this panel. And get ready to shoot some paint. Okay, so like I said, we're doing a bespoke paint job and everything is black that I want black. I've taped up. I wish I, wish I had some pin stripes that I could just do that with. It would have been easier. Anyway, we're doing two turns. So this is going to become pearl white and gloss black with an M3 Motorsport triple stripe running through that. So whenever you're spraying white, always white primer. Probably three or four coats. It'll just save on the actual white paint. job on its way. Nice, I like it. And just like that we've gone from a motorbike piece of plastic to a F650 GS boys. Look at that. Looking smart. Hey guys, what's up? I am super excited. I've just finished Yesterday, spray painting our fairing panels, the center fairing, the left fairing, and the right fairing for the BMW F650 GS. Like I said, I was going to do a custom spray job, something I designed myself and thought I would challenge myself to do. And it's been 24 hours since I laid the layers of clear coat, 2K clear coat. And this is what we got, guys. I'm super excited to get this on the bark. That's our back fairings. Look how awesome that's looking. I did the side headlight infills that the indicators go on. I did that in a nice pull white. All the stickers were laid down first and the clear coats over the stickers to protect that. Look at that front. Mud God, guys. This bike is going to be awesome. I'm super excited now. Look at that shine. Again, we spray painting in a barn. So it's not the ideal situation. I've done a mock-up just to give you guys an idea of this spray job. So that's our... Decals, I did some pinstriping. It's a, again, it's not fastening, it's just there as a mock up. It's our center fairing with our Motorsport and World Map GS. Guys, it's going to be awesome. I can't wait to get some of these bits on. And I'm going to start with the front mudguard assembly just so I can get a good view of what the box is going to look like. And we'll take it from there. Happy days. Oh. Oh, I'm sure you saw I tried to bend the rear subframe. If you have a look here, the number plate was installed pretty skew. So I thought, okay, the number plate's skew. But the more I look at it, I don't know if you can see that. You see, that rear number plate holder should be centered to the wheel. This frame is bent that away. So a little bit clockwise, which makes sense because if you remember, I showed you the 
rear pillion handlebars and it was properly damaged this side so I'm pretty sure as it fell over this side it's taken a whack here and it's bent it that away boom so do we leave it no we don't leave it like that guys we need to get that sorted it's not it's not gonna be a prop I'm sure there you go you can see how skew that is to the rest of the bike not great but on eBay I found a replacement it looks awesome actually even the paintwork is better than what this one is so again a little bit more stripping that needs to happen before we get this bike on the road um, I've ordered it it should be out in the next two three days I'll only strip this fuel tank and the exhaust and everything off once the new one is out so that I can replace it in the same time in the same day but guys this is gonna be awesome stay tuned for a bespoke BMW F650 GS that's going to be coming together. together I uh, want to know does it have first gear second gear third gear does it stop does it go I know there's more work to do but it's been over a year waiting so I hope it starts that's number one and number two I hope it drives let's try I'm actually nervous okay we've got that happening Officially my first ride and this bike is awesome! Hoorah! Wow. You know the feeling you get when you realize you made it what it is. I'm so... So impressed with what's coming of this BMW. So stay tuned, we're gonna get this rear subframe replaced. We're gonna go through one or two other Tidbits I still want to get done and tidy up, but uh, I'm loving it. So we have got a rear bent subframe. It's this frame that goes all the way, all the way across and down and connects to the main frame. That's all painted, that's all looking spiffy. Um, I'll put all the parts back just so we can get an idea of what it's going to look like. But that rear subframe needs replacing and we just got a delivery so 
a lot of wrenching to happen the seats gonna come off the two side fairings are gonna come off the exhaust need to be dismounted the rear tail light all the electricals built underneath that needs to come out uh, it doesn't look like much but there's also obviously the under tray and the mud guard and the uh, number plate holder and the extra frame bits that go for the side boxes so I mean just in this little section alone you can see all the little nuts and bolts there's quite a few just in there we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and there's obviously more holding that on again so just in that little corner there's 12 plus fuel tank and everything else that's integrated into the subframe so wish me luck and i hope i can get all back together the way it should go i'll time lapse this for you guys and hopefully we get a straight frame and a seat that fits right because that seat i'm assuming doesn't fit right because this is all crooked bent up bent sideways let's get that sorted and get this bike closer to a finished product we're getting there guys Right, so that's our rear subframe removed the main bolts to remove obviously to get the subframe out is the top one here the rear one here and exactly the same on the other side so it connects to the main frame with those two main bolts obviously the exhausts need to come out the re exhaust they are sitting over there now literally only two bolts and off with that rear tail light out and the under tray is still attached over there plastic under tray I need to remove that and get that onto our frame. Our frame is looking fresh, all painted up. Here we go, it's our new second hand frame. Got nice and straight that is. Just need to do a clear coat over that. Here's our old frame, look how bent that is. Whop. All bent up. Yeah, so I'd have to take the rear foot pegs out for the passenger and put them onto that frame. Transfer a couple of bits, but I'm gonna have to put some clear coat, let that dry, and then carry on with this project. Stop. 
Okay, so just like that, we've got our new subframe in, and you don't realize how skew or bent your frame is unless you put in the new one. I mean, I never ever had that gap there with the old subframe. I never had any other space I have underneath here, underneath all there. I had none of that space available to me. Wow, looking good. Gave the frame a nice spray. All looking fresh. Clean up the bolts. Got our tail light back in. All wiped down, cleaned up. Exhaust is back in. I want to show you guys something. You see how straight, I hope you can see it. You see how straight that frame is from that mounting point to the back and running over. I always thought this rear end was a little bit high for this bike because the seat wasn't fitting right and it was causing an alignment issue there. We still have to see if that sorted that out. But I want you to just compare that straight frame to how bent that is. Look how bent that is, guys. That's straight. With a slight curvature to it to follow the line of the bike. And look at that. Look how bent that is. Wow, also realized afterwards there is a bit of a kink out. So this has gone completely up. So this rear end was properly raised. So definitely a good idea to have replaced that. When it's off the bike, it looks horrible now. I still have to take these foot pegs off and get them on there. But she's coming along nicely. This rear end is definitely straight now with that tire and with the rest of the bike. Yep, we've got a new tank pad on, GS, that's it, exhaust are back on, frame me straight guys, I'm going to try retrofit the seat back on now and see if I've got a better fit. Much better, no forcing, no prying. Obviously, I just had to line up the back, it's got two little tabs that needs to accept, but that's it. Subframe is done. I obviously have to get the rear boot back in. Call it a boot, but it's just like a little storage compartment. Uh, I just need to spray that. You've seen the photos. I uh, actually did proper plastic welding and repairs. She's getting there.
F650, done and dusted. Custom spray job, a lot of time and effort. I hope you've enjoyed all the work we've put into it and the color scheme we came up with the pearlescent white, the black and the motorsport colors. We did a custom badge job on this. So we've taken an original motorsport badge from a BMW car. It's actually the horn button. And we've got that on the sides. We've got a high rise screen. We followed through the paintwork with the white on the indicators to blend it in. And I think we've done an awesome job, guys. Starts on the button. And the only thing left to do is to take it for a ride. So I hope you've loved this episode. I hope you love what, what we've done with the bike. And I hope you like, share, subscribe. Mm -hmm.